I get this. Amazing. Okay. Okay, guys. So here we go. Um, so you should all have your notes out and your periodic table out. Okay. So we're talking about electron configurations today and Hund's rule and orbital configurations. Um, it's really going to be a pretty light day. But the first thing we have to talk about is how to label our periodic table so that we can successfully do electron configurations. So what I want you guys to look at first is look at your periodic table. The first two columns, which look very familiar, unless you've never had chemistry before, in which case perk up your ears, so you have a lot to learn today. Um, this thing doesn't see the top of the, there we go. Okay, so. Um, the first two columns are going to be labeled S, so if you haven't done so already, label S as the first two columns on your periodic table. Um, then on the Ds is this ne the transition metal block, basically. Okay. Next up are your Ps over here. These six columns over here are your Ps. Technically, helium belongs next to hydrogen over here, but helium is a non-metal, so we group it with the non-metals on that side, which is why it's found over there. But technically, helium belongs in the S block. Okay? And then lastly, the two on the bottom here are the Fs. Okay? That's the first thing that you should label. The next things that you need to label on the periodic table are the rows. Okay? So row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7, all the way down for the main rows. And then something that I really want you guys to take note of and I'll explain why this is in a, in a little bit, but you make sure that you have this labeled now, is that the Ds, the first row of the Ds is 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. Okay, so in row 4, if you go through it, then you would end up in the 3 Ds, which we'll get to the reason why in a second. But that's, that's the fact of it right now. And then um, down in the, in the two F uh, rows, we have row 4 and row 5. Row 4 and 5 for the Fs, 4 and 5. Okay? So that's how you can set up your periodic table um, to succeed with this whole concept today. Um, this is technically section 6.8. We're skipping 6.7 because it's a fluff section and we don't really need to talk about it. Um, you guys can read it on your own. But we're talking about electron configurations. Okay. When I say the word configure, when you hear the word configuration, what does that word mean? Shape or what are some other words that we can? Legos. Like Legos, constructing, right? It's like the structure, really. Whenever you guys hear configuration, you should think of structure, OK? So when we do electron configurations, we're really doing how the atoms are structuring their, their electrons. I'll tell you. We're getting there. I like that you're thinking about it, though. OK, um, this thing up here. Look up. There you go. That's better. OK, so electron configuration. It's, it's recording for the, the 15 people that are not seeing the lecture today. Um, so electron configurations are defined as the structure of electrons within the atom. Okay? So when we do electron configurations, we're really just describing how electrons are structured within the atom. Okay? Um, so really the best way to learn these is just to look at examples and see how they're done. So we're going to start with the easiest one, which was helium. And we're going to describe, describe helium's electron configuration. So if we take a look, helium is found in the first row. Okay? So we're going to write a 1. And then it's also in the s orbitals. Okay? So it's in the first little half of the s orbitals, so we're going to write s and 1. Okay, we're looking at hydrogen. Did I say helium? Yeah. I'm sorry. Hydrogen. Okay, so this is the electron configuration for hydrogen. First row, s orbital, first thing in that s orbital. Okay, to build on that, to do helium, helium also has an electron that's in the place of hydrogen but then we build on it to get to helium so it's in the first row as well and technically again guys helium belongs next to hydrogen okay so then we draw um, it's in the S's and it's the second thing in that S orbital so we do two okay simple so far yes okay let's do one that's in a lower shell let's do phosphorus Okay, 
So for phosphorus, basically we have to describe everything we go through to get to phosphorus. Okay, we're like labeling where all of phosphorus's L electrons are hanging out. So we just basically read the periodic table just like a book. Okay, I'm going to start in the top right corner. I'm going to read left to right, notating everything that I go through. Okay, so starting in the top corner, I go through the first shell, the s orbital, two things. So one first shell, s orbital, two things. That's the only thing in this shell, so I've done it, I'm done, I can go down to the next shell. The next shell, I'm in two, and where am I at? The s orbital, and I go through two things. So I'm in the second shell, s orbital, I go through two things. Now I keep reading left to right just like a book, and so I go left to right. Now I'm where? What is this? The P's. So now I'm in, still in the second shell, but now I'm in the P orbitals, and I go through one, two, three, four, five, six things. 2P6. Okay, so now I've gone through that row. And now I'm going to go down another row because I'm looking for phosphorus. I haven't ended at phosphorus yet. So I'm going down another row, and now I'm in the third row. I go through the S's again, so 3S, and I go through two things, so 3S2, and I keep going left to right, reading like a book, and now I'm where? Where am I? 3P, so I'm in the 3P's. However, phosphorus is the third thing, so I go 1, 2, 3, so I end up at 3P3, and that's the electron configuration for phosphorus. Raise your hand if this looks familiar. All right, I love that. Okay, so. Um, that's, a, that's it so far. Okay. The next thing I want to introduce to you is this little chart, which some people hate and some people like, but I want to show you either way. I need two of these. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm dropping things. Okay. Okay. Do you guys remember? Oh, uh, this thing like, likes to look at my butt. Apparently, come on. <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, guys, remember how in Bohr's model of the atom, every shell had its own specific energy level? <laughs> Why? 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 Here. I don't know where else to put this thing. I don't. I'll clip it like near my shoulder. Okay, um, so guys, every shell, if you guys remember the Bohr model had, every shell had a different energy level, um, which he got right, but the different energies are actually, there's different energies contained in each energy level, and um, this is a chart that kind of describes the different energies. So in the first shell, way down here, we're in the very first shell, and it's got a 1s in it, okay? 1s is the very basic, it's the lowest energy level that you can be in an atom. After that, we have the 2s, and then within the 2s, we also have the 2p, which is a little bit higher in energy, okay? So as you, basically as you're reading left to right, so the things on the right are going to have less energy than things on the left, and things in lower shells will have more energy, too. So this is basically lowest energy possible, we're gaining up in energy, and then you also gain up in energy as you go across, okay? Um, so, so there's the p's, the 2p's. Now we're in the third shell, the 3s has the lowest energy in the third shell next to the three P's. And then something interesting happens. If you keep going up in energy, the next highest energy is the 4S, and then the three D's, and then the four P's, okay? So even though the D orbital belongs to the third shell, it's actually a little bit higher in energy than the four S's, okay? For that reason, we have shifted the D orbitals Come on, come on, come here. Okay, so um, for that reason we have shifted the d orbitals down so that when you do read the periodic table left to right, you're getting it in order of increasing energy. Okay, so as you go through the periodic table, we end up after three, after the three p's, we end up in the four s's, which is true. After the three p's, we end up in the four s's in terms of energy level. Okay, so basically the structure of the periodic table reflects the energy levels of the orbitals, okay? Because as you're reading left to right, as you're reading left to right, you are reading through increasing energy levels, and that's it, okay? So it's a really logical setup. The only thing that you have to remember is that the Ds are shifted down when you're doing the electron configurations, that the third D row 
um, is technically next to the four S's. Go ahead, Tony. Right, I, 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 I know what you're talking about, but that doesn't explain why. There's no like reasoning behind that. It's just like a tool, so it's useful, but I don't, I don't like it because it's not like you can't, you don't know why you're doing it. You know, it's just like a little cheating tool. So I don't, I don't teach people that because. I don't, like, I don't like to cheat, but yeah, if it helps you to use it, that's fine, but you have to know why you're using it. Okay, um, all right guys, so anyway, this is why the Ds are shifted down, okay, and this is the last time you're gonna see this. I think if you were in this warden's class last year, now it's looking way up. <sighs> Come here, thank you. Okay, so if you were in Ms. Warden's class last year, you learned to do electron configurations using this kind of chart, no longer. Okay, you were just, you, yes, and it's possible. If you, just, <laughs> if you just look at the periodic table, you can do it, okay? And we're gonna practice that today. Okay, so, yeah, so say goodbye to your lovely, your lovely chart, it's dead, okay. All right, so, yeah, all right, so we did that. So let's try something harder, let's do silver, AG. AG is silver. Okay, guys, if you, if you see where silver is, it's number 47 on the periodic table. I need everyone with me. We are learning things today. Tony. Okay. And Gaston. And Anthony, I don't know where you're looking. Okay, oh, that's better. Okay, so for 47, we're doing silver. Okay, that's in the D block, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of um, goofiness. So I'm gonna call, call people out and we're gonna do this together. Elsie, start me out. What are my first three things I'm gonna write down for silver? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 2P6, looking good. Um, let's see, Howard, pick me up. Howard? Yeah. 3S2, 3P6, just reading left to right like a book, so we've gone through 3P6, what's, what's the next thing down? 4S2, looking good. 4S2. Who can pick me up now? From the Tony, go ahead. Next three things. 3P? Oh, 3D. Yes, you're correct. 3D. It's 10 in this one. Yeah, 3D 10. So, we're, so right now we're at 4S2, and now we're going straight across, still reading left to right, just like a book, guys. So 4S2, 3D 10, and now we're back at what? Tony's still going. He's got two left. Perfect, and then perfect, and then five S two, looking good. Um, who can pick me up from here? Let's do Bailey. Five, wait, 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 five D nine or remember the the these are shifted down. Four D nine. Yes, you are correct because it ends up at the ninth spot right there. So that's silver, okay? So um, that's the electron configuration for silver, okay? So guys, if you notice, this whole time, we're just going left to right like a book in the periodic table, okay? Okay, um, so that's the Ds. Um, there is another way to do it. I know this looks really long. There's a shortcut. Yeah, Aline. Why is helium in the S block? Because technically it, like, it only has two electrons, and there's in the, and it's in the first shell, and the first shell only has an s orbital. So why is it on that side? Because it's a nonmetal, so they group it with the nonmetals, and it's a it's a noble gas as well, and it so it like its properties align with the noble gases, but yeah, but right, but the hydrogen it has properties more like the things in this column here, so the the, the periodic table is grouped more so for properties, so that's why they do it. Okay, okay. Um, so guys, as far as the shortcuts go, the way that you can make this a shortcut is basically you look for the noble gas that came right before silver. So in terms of, so this is our noble gas column, okay? I wish this would work better. It's really good in theory. Okay, this is the noble gas column. Okay, so uh, before silver, so this is our silver. What noble gas comes before silver? Krypton, Krypton, right. So Krypton is the noble gas that g comes before silver. So to do the noble gas shortcut, then we would do silver. And then we would put Krypton in brackets. 
and then we would just pick up from Krypton. Okay, so here's Krypton. Now we just pick up as if we are starting there. So from Krypton, we go, go down to 5s2 and then 4d9. So it makes it a lot shorter. Okay? Yes, Aline. What does it show? shows you where the location of every single electron in that atom is. It's arranged in orbitals, like the s orbital, the p orbital, the d orbitals. They're not in circles, but they're in like concentric shells. Yeah. So each shell has its own like configuration of shapes. Um, yeah. Does that help? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that for you. Here, I need a different. Okay, you guys ready for this? This is actually really helpful, I think. Okay, but first I need more ink. Okay, so there's a couple things that I can mention about um, the shapes of the orbitals. I just had a question about the shapes of the orbitals. So the most basic information you need to know about the orbitals is that the s orbitals are spherical and there's one of them. Okay, each orbital holds two electrons though, so the s orbital can hold two electrons. Okay, the p orbitals are do like dumbbell shaped, and there's three of them, and each of them can hold two electrons. So the total number of electrons that the p's can hold is six. Okay, which lo and behold, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six atoms in that section. Okay, along with two atoms in the um, the s section, and there's two that can hold there. So there's actually a correlation there. Um, the d's are much more complicated and ornate, but just for the sake of explanation, I'm going to call them dumbbells as well. But there's five suborbitals for the for the D section. They look more like double orbitals, every single one of them, but just for the sake of explanation, um, there's like five of them, okay, in the, in the D section. Each can hold two electrons, so you can have a total of ten electrons here, okay? So there's six in the P's and then two electrons in the S's. Okay, um, and then finally in the F's. Okay, and in the F's there are um, seven of these guys. I'm not going to draw seven. I'll just use seven times dumbbell. Okay, <laughs> um, so seven dumbbells in the S or in the F. I'm sorry. Each can hold two, so you get a total of 14 electrons held in the F orbitals. Okay. Um, the way that these guys overlap, I can draw a picture that kind of confuses half the people I show and makes it make a lot of sense to other half. So if it starts to look confusing to you, just tune out for a second. Okay, so um, if we wanted to do, for instance, like silicon um, or sulfur, let's do sulfur. Okay, so if I wanted to do sulfur, really quick, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p. Four, okay, if I wanted to do that out using like the orbital shapes, this is what it would look like. I would have, so in the first shell, I would have a single s orbital, okay? So here's my first shell, that's my single s orbital, and I'm gonna have two electrons on it, okay? So there's my two electrons, so my one s2 is done. Then I'm going to go into the second shell, and it's going to have its own s orbital. So here's that s orbital, okay? And that's going to have two electrons on it as well. Okay? Now I go into the p orbitals. The p orbitals are dumbbell shaped and they like overlap each other. Um, so here's the first dumbbell shape, okay? And then the next dumbbell shape, and then the next dumbbell shape. So they overlap. And each one of those dumbbells has two electrons on it for a total of six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's the second. I just, so that was what I just drew, drew out. So the P's are all have, yes, yep, the P's always have two, the D's always have five, and the F's always have 14. Um, so that was the two P's. Um, so now we're into the three S, so now we're in a whole new shell. Okay, so the three, the third shell has its own s orbital, that's a circle. Notice, guys, how the orbitals are getting bigger, okay? That's true. Every orbital that's on a new shell has to be bigger because they're farther out from the nucleus, okay? So the, the 3s 
has two electrons in it as well. Okay. And then we're at the three P's, so now I have to draw in my dumbbells for the three P's. So I have three dumbbells in the three P's. So it goes dumbbell, dumbbell, and dumbbell. Okay? And I only have four electrons on that, so I'm going to have one, two, three, and four. And this would be like the overlapping orbital shapes for sulfur. Okay? So that helps some people, and some people are like, huh? And so if you're one of those people, don't worry. As long as you can do the electron configuration, that's the important part. Okay? Um, but that's, this, is what, this is literally what we're describing. This is literally what we're describing when we do electron configurations. Okay? Um, okay, so a couple more things I need to mention about electron configurations. Um, Things with charges. So let's take a look at the sulfur. What is sulfur is charge, guys? On the periodic table, what's the charge? Two minus. Sulfur has a two minus charge. So looking at the sulfur two minus charge, what does is, what is this ion have that this sulfur does not? It gained two electrons. That's why it has a negative two charge. So if we wanted to do the electron configuration for sulfur then, we would have to account for those two electrons. Okay, so for sulfur then, we take a look at where it is now, and so if it gains two electrons, then it's going to gain one, two. So those two, two electrons is now, are now floating around, so we're going to have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6 now. Okay, because there are two more electrons hanging out on the s orbital, or yeah, on the p orbital. Okay, so ions do affect the electron configuration. Um, if you guys notice, but Miss O, that's the same electron configuration as argon. You're right, and it can happen. That happens. Does it turn it into argon is my question. Why doesn't it turn into argon? The number, I heard it, the number of protons is what determines the identity of an element. So because sulfur still has, we haven't changed its, its protons, so it'll still have 16 protons. It has just gained two more electrons, so that means now it has 18 electrons. Yes? Um, no, you can't just write AR. Um, however, guys, if we wrote the electron configuration for argon, it would look exactly the same. And there's a word for that. Two, nope, 3s2. 3s2, 3p6. If two things have the same electron configuration, they're called isoelectric. Okay, so if something is isoelectric, that means it has the same electron configuration as something else. Okay? So make sure you know that part. And to get this done, I want you guys to try this on your own. Do the electron configuration for Na+. For Na+, what would the electron configuration be for Na+. Okay, who thinks they've got it figured out? Oh, and go ahead. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Um, looking good. So guys, Owen realized that Na is right here. However, sodium, is, in this case, if it's positive, did it gain or lose an electron? Lost an electron, so now it's going to be one place like behind where it was before, Okay, because it lost an electron. So if it lost an electron, we're back up here. So it's going to be isoelectric with neon, okay? You'll notice, guys, that ions are always going to be isoelectric with some type of noble gas, okay? Um, because they're always trying to get to eight electrons in their outer shell, so they're always trying to mimic a, no a noble gas because they're the most stable. Um, so anyway, anytime you have an ion, it's going to be some type of noble gas 
um, configuration. Okay, so anyway, this is what sodium, raise your hand if you also do that for sodiums. Nice, looking good. Okay, um, so lastly, let's practice doing the Fs, okay? Um, long story short, guys, for, for the F column, the Fs really belong if you were, like it can hear me like a dog, okay. <laughs> um, the Fs really belong, like if you cut this section out of the periodic table and then like disconnected the Ds and pushed it down and then put the Fs in the middle, that's where they would connect. So after the six and seven row, this would like cut and paste here and it would be a really long periodic table. Okay? So that's where they connect. So basically as you go through the six S, you're actually gonna come down and go through the four Fs and then come back up and go through the five D. Okay? Yep, so that's how you do it. And then after you go through the P's, you go down to the, the seven S's and then down to the five Fs and then back up through the six D. Okay? And so technically the seven P's are gonna be the, the last part of the periodic table that we have, okay? Um, so let's, let's do that. Um, and we're gonna do Einsteinium, okay? Number 99. Do you guys wanna try it on your own? Or should you, want, okay, I'm seeing nodding. So try 99, try Einsteinium on your own and we'll see if you guys can't get this right. No noble gas shortcuts, no noble gas shortcuts. I know, I mean, yes. You count them as Ds, yep. And I'll, I'll tell you what, the, they have their own little fancy electron configurations. So we'll talk about that. Absolutely. You're going to be in the Fs twice to do Einsteinium. Um, the Fs come after the 6S, and then 4F, and then 5D, 6P, 7S, 5F, 6D. Silver um, was above where we need to, so we don't start using the F's until we go through the 6S. So if you're not using the 6S, you won't be using the F's. So this is like your indicator to look for the F's. And then when you, you're past 6D's, you both When you're, well, if you're in the 5D's, you're only going to use the first row. If you're in the 6D's, you're going to use both of them. Because it doesn't go in order of rows. It goes in order of. Oh, so the first row of F actually belongs in the The first row of F. Um, not. I mean, it, it's along this line that you would follow. Yeah, it's in the line of six, I guess you could say. Yes. Okay. All right, guys, I'm hearing chatter, which means we're probably done. So Einsteinium number 99. Here it goes. E S. Okay. 
Um, I'm gonna call on people. Elijah, walk me through the first four of these things. Mm-hmm. Three, us two, looking good. Ian, pick me up. Oh, three, D6. Mm-hmm. Four, S2. Three, D10. Four, D6. Four, P. Six. Looking good. Um, let's go with Sabrina. After 4P6. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 5P6. Looking good. Um, let's go Vivian. After 5P6. Uh-huh. Okay. 5D10. Perfect, guys. I'm going to walk you through what we just did just in case you missed it. We were at 5P6. We went through 5P6. We came down to 6S2. And then after 6S2 is where the Fs connect. So then we go down to the F column. So this is technically 4F. So 4F14. And then we jump back up to where we left off. 5D10. And then 6... Whoop, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, let's see. Punya, walk me through the next few. 6P6, yep, 6P6, and then 7S2, and then 5F10, 5F10. Okay, looking good. Raise your hand if you also did this as your answer. All right, looking good. Okay, real quick, what would the noble gas configuration of this look like? The noble gas shortcut. Sharon, you got it? How do we do that? LU. We have to find the noble gas that's right before Einsteinium. So it's the closest one to Einsteinium. CF? And it has to be one of these. So which one comes right before the Einsteinium? Right. So we start out with RN. Whoop. Okay, radon is the closest noble gas to Einsteinium. Okay. Um, so after we pick up from radon, where do we have to keep going from? 7S2, oops. So after radon, basically we're like skipping all the way down, and so then we go down to 7S2, and then we can do 5F10. So that saves you a whole lot of work if you just do the, the shortcut. Okay? All right. So that's electron configurations, guys. Thumbs up. Yeah, Miss O, I got this. Miss O, I need more examples. Miss O, I'm not really sure what we're doing. Okay, looking good. Thank you. All right, so guys, yes. That's O-U-U-O, Ananoctium. Okay, they, um, it technically would have noble gas properties, but it would disappear within moments. Everything that's like in the, this bottom part are all created in labs, and they exist for seconds or fractions of seconds. They're, we have them because we can make them, and it's exciting, because um, humans can make new elements, which is fun. Um, but yeah, they're super unstable because they're so big that they just like decon like they decompose. Yes. Seven S two six. No, we technically jump down at first. We don't account for this. Well, it we're we're attaching it right here, and the only time that it does that six the six D one thing is like for the electron configuration, like for lanthanum. Um, and this is something that I'm not going to test you on, and the AP test doesn't test you on, because it's like kind of like exceptions to these rules. Um, but like if you have lanthanum, um, which is right here, LA, um, if you wanted to do the noble gas shortcut part of it, you would start at xenon, um, and then you would have 6S2, and then technically 5D1. Um, the reason it does that is that the 5Ds and the 4Fs are very close in energy level. Um, and so if you're only adding one electron, a lot of times they'll, it'll just end up in the 5Ds. Um, but if you're filling up the entire row, it skips the Ds and goes to the 4Fs instead. Um, so basically the more electrons that you have in the, four, like the 4F rows, then it's going to go, it's going to skip that little 1D thing. Um, so long story short, if you're looking to use the 4Fs or, or the 5Fs at all, skip the Ds and go to the Fs first, OK? Um, but yeah, this is a, an exception that you will, it's important to know, but it's not going to be on the AP test or on my test, OK? So there's that. OK, um, any other questions on electron configurations?
We're good? Okay, so last year you also guys, you guys must have learned something called, I think this thing is getting tired, um, orbital diagrams, which we're going to go over really quick. I know. Oh, but I don't want to cut my thing. Okay. Okay, guys, there's one last way that we can depict where electrons are hanging out in, the, in atoms, and it's the orbital diagram of, its, of the atom. Um, in order to figure out how we fill out orbital diagrams, you have to first know what Hund's rule is. There's lots of different ways to say Hund's rule. Oop. But the best way to, that makes sense for me at least is that um, electrons fill an orbital in a way. Okay, I'll explain this and let you guys have your break. But um, Hund's rule basically says electrons will fill an orbital in a way that avoids pairing of electrons. Um, see you later, Michelle. The reason that is, is because electrons, guys, both have negative charges. And so if they're near each other, they're going to repel. And so they try and stay away from each other as much as possible. Okay, we'll go more into that after the break. So go ahead and take your break. Grab some hot cocoa if you don't have some already.